Hey guys, it's Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And today we'll be talking about these two guys and more specifically the steel and assumed heat treat on them. So this is a Spyderco Para 3 in M390 at about 61 Rockwell. This is a Benchmade 940 Knifeworks exclusive in 20 CV, which you can't see because it's been ground off. Um, at roughly 59 HRC. I feel pretty confident in the 59 on this one. Less confident in the 61 on this one, but it's definitely harder than 60 Rockwell, I can tell you that much. It's definitely more than 60, and it's definitely less than 62. I'll put it that way. So, what I did is I sharpened both of these knives on uh, Chosera 800, then the 3K, and then uh, stropped on uh, one micron, is actually on not this one, but one micron diamond um, spray on a paint stirrer. So this is three micron CBN, but it's one micron diamond. So they both got the same sharpening. This one is about 17 degrees per side, and I increased this one to an angle. It's probably between 15 and 17, this one here. So, but very different geometry. This one is like 20 thousandths behind the edge. And this one is probably sub 10 still. So quite a bit better geometry on the 940. But, uh, but the point isn't the geometry. The point is I was, I put out a video about uh, the breakdown of uh, PM steels particle metallurgy steels. And the specifics on the particle metallurgy is that um, with steels, there comes a point when you're putting so much alloying elements into the steel that you basically have to do particle metallurgy. Otherwise, it's just too, it's going to be too fragile using uh, traditional methods. So PM steels generally will have higher carbide contents just because if you don't need, if you don't have that much alloy in it, you don't need to PM it, right? So in that video, I kind of discussed how the edge breaks down over time. And I wasn't 100% certain the effect of hardness, but I took a guess. But I wanted to confirm it, still anecdotally, anecdotally, um, but I wanted to confirm it nonetheless. And so the way I went about that is I sharpened these the same as I stated, and then I used them both. Uh, just EDC tasks, um, most of the wear is through cutting cardboard, but I use them both, and over the course of using them, I would feel the edge, you know, check it on my nail, shave hair, cut paper, best test them, stuff like that. I wasn't super careful and like, oh, you know, this many feet of cardboard equals this result. It was just rough, rough. My main question was, is, is the harder steel going to A, uh, hold the fine edge longer and B eventually get to the same working edge that this will those are the two main questions I had and the answer to those is yes Yes, they will So to summarize the findings in one statement is that The same steel because these are analogs of each other basically the same chemistry if you heat treat it harder Roughly there's a lot of nuance to that but roughly if you heat treat it harder it will hold the fine edge longer and uh, after a certain amount of time will reach the same working edge that the softer stuff will reach. So that's pretty much it. So let's kind of dig into the, the nuance of that a little bit. So first off, let's look at this chart here. So this is similar to the one that I showed before. So I sharpened both of them. They are both roughly 150 Bess score. Um, and then I basically used them until they were in the 350 to 400 range is where they ended up. And this is kind of how the wear looked. So for the 20 CV, there was an almost immediate loss of that nice crispy front end sharpness of that fine edge that I personally like the most. That was pretty much gone immediately. So that's kind of this region A, initial loss of sharpness. 
So that happened immediately. But then this is what surprised me is I thought it was just kind of gonna shoot down to the working edge and plateau. But there was a very long period of time that this still had an apex that would catch on my fingernail and it doesn't really anymore and uh, would scrape shave hair. And it held on to that thing like a son of a gun. It would not lose this scrape shaving edge. And I was really surprised by that. So that initial sharpness was gone, but it held on to what, I, what is better than a working edge for a long time. And I kind of like that actually, you know? It lost that shaving or that, you know, front end sharpness that I really, really appreciate. But man, this region of wear, where it, it kind of holds on to this aggressiveness was really, really useful. And it made me appreciate what this steel is doing with a 20% carbide volume, even though very little of it is vanadium carbide, but it's, that's still a lot of carbide. And, you know, it would still do things that I needed it to do. Um, so I was really impressed by this kind of scrape shaving edge that just held on to for freaking ever. I had to work, like work, to get rid of this edge. And I finally did. And then it went into what I would call a full working edge. And that's where it will not shave hair anymore, but it will... You know, cut paper. It'll catch it sometimes, but it'll cut paper. So that's that working edge that it that it kind of settles down into, and it will just hold that thing for a dang long time in EDC. So that's how this one went. There's kind of those three regions going on. So what do you get if you go harder? So started at the same sharpness. same sharpness, there is a very noticeable holding on to that fine edge holding, absolutely for sure. But eventually, I was able to wear it down. Like, to get out of this finer edge holding, like to get to this through this initial loss, it took a noticeable amount of time. So that's already a huge plus for hard, for that extra hardness right there. And then because you kind of move out this region A out to here is uh, at any given point in time, you're sharper than the softer steel. So it just kind of stayed sharper over time than the 20CV did. And whereas the 20CV kind of rapidly broke down into this scrape shaving edge, this really felt more refined out throughout this entire process, basically. And uh, eventually, once again, this took a ridiculous amount of work to break down into a working edge. Like, it was tough. And uh, I did get it there, and they're both at roughly the same feeling working edge, and they, they get to the same place, eventually. But this doesn't really do it justice because this chart kind of shows this knife being in that full working edge for there. And this knife, you know, is only like that's the difference, you know, right there. Whereas in reality, this point is probably more like out here. You know, this got to that full working edge well before this one did. So it's what you'd expect. Um explaining that full working edge once again is that it'll cut paper you know it'll cut the paper but it's you know won't really shave your hair won't really catch on your fingernail anymore and if i put on my finger pads i can run it over my fingers and it won't cut them so now if i dig in it will cut them but it doesn't have that like real fine bite anymore um and the way it feels on my fingertips is kind of like, whereas on a steel, like a simple carbon steel, it just blunts over. It's just like completely flat, like, a, like the back of the spine of this knife, you know? With a carbon steel, it's like that. But with this, it's like there's little granules of sand almost on the edge is what it feels like. 
you know, and they don't feel like sharp on your fingers, but there's definitely stuff poking out for sure. And so what you go from is kind of a real, at the front end, this real fine, like slice through bite to what becomes more like a saw, you know, where it's, it'll tear through cardboard, it'll tear through the paper fibers because it's got those carbides sticking out. And that's what you get in this working edge where it'll just cut stuff because it's got the serrations, the saw teeth, you know? And, uh, and that's what you get there. And this is the, the interesting thing that I'm gonna throw out now that I was not expecting. Um, I say that they get to the same working edge and functionally in best score they do, but they do feel a little bit different in the sense that this softer 20 CV feels like it has more of those little granules of sand on the edge. And this really confused me. And that's why I, I used this one for a lot longer than this because I was trying to figure out what was going on. And I wasn't sure if this was just holding on to that fine edge because it was harder or what. And uh, after using it a lot, I think this is what's going on is uh, with steels that have a lot of chromium carbide in them, like these do, when you are austenizing, so when you're going to heat treat these knives, you austenize the steel, you bring it up to very hot temperatures, so in the realm of like 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and you hold it there. When you've got a lot of chromium carbide and not a lot of vanadium carbide or nitrogen or niobium, or other stabilizing elements is those chromium carbides will dissolve and uh, you'll reduce your carbide volume because that chromium and carbide are separating. There's enough heat energy to separate the two. And what that results in is as you increase your austenizing temperature, more of this carbon that's been separated goes towards the hardness and leaves this chromium for stainlessness. So, in, and in order to get this 61 Rockwell, you need that extra carbon. So, what I think is going on is that because this knife is harder, that more of that ca carbon and chromium have been separated. And what results in this knife having less carbide volume than this knife. And the way that manifests itself is at the edge, it feels like there's more sand particles on the apex of the 20CV than it does the M390. But in terms of how they cut, their level of sharpness, all of that is roughly the same in terms of this working edge. But in the way it feels on my fingers, and only through this can I tell the difference, is... Uh, this feels like it has more carbide volume. And my, that's my theory why, is because of that difference in austenizing temperature. So, there were the results of this, you know, I already said, you're gonna get more fine edge out of this guy and you basically end up at the same place. It just takes a lot longer to get there with this. This is a more enjoyable experience. But after doing this test, I have a whole new respect for M390 20CV and a whole new appreciation for even softer heat treated steels. The, the working edge that this has does work. It really does. And I really have fallen out of love with this knife and I was bummed, especially because I got it reground. Um, but you know, this really sparked new love for me for this knife. It's a great carry. It's now has great geometry and the steel isn't exactly my cup of tea, but it's not garbage. Like I kind of thought it was, but if you can appreciate the working edge, especially how long it'll hold on to that scrape shave, you know, this is pretty nice. It really is. Both of these knives like I said, are in the 350 to 400 best, but they're totally serviceable, you know? Like I use these to cut 
um, like plastic strapping and uh, um, zip ties and all those things when I was uh, opening up. We got a new freezer over there. And uh, yeah, they, they did great. They still have enough bite aggression in them to grab onto those slippery plastics and cut through them. Whereas a carbon steel that would get to this point, it would just slide right off. Or a steel with lesser carbide to some extent. So yeah, it was a it was an interesting test. It took a long time to freaking wear these things down. But it was good. I'm glad that it bred new appreciation for for this knife and yeah it confirmed what i kind of thought about the effect of hardness with a little new information on maybe the potential carbide volumes involved here i think you'd see less of an effect on higher vanadium carbide steels because vanadium carbide is much more stable at high temperature but i don't know i don't know the answer to that so yeah, I'm not saying that I'm going to go looking for softer steels because of this, just FYI. Like, I really want to buy some S90V, but, like, do I really want to buy Benchmade S90V when I can get Spyderco S90V? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm still conflicted there. It opens me up to maybe buying Benchmade S90V, but I just really feel like I'm going to get more bang for my buck buying Spyderco S90V who's on record for hardening it between like 61 and 62 Rockwell, whereas Benchmade, their S90 is between 59 and 61. So yeah, I hope this was informational. Uh, talked a lot, but I, I enjoyed doing this one. It was very interesting. I hope to do a test where I cut some rope. Matter of fact, I've got it down here. Got some uh, three quarter inch Manila rope here. I do want to do a test where, you know, I cut, do 20 cuts and then best test with that one, 20 cuts, best test with this one and see if we can't kind of plot that edge degradation a little bit. But I don't know if I'm going to have time for that. I don't know if I have enough rope for that to even work. You know, the rate, if we'll actually be able to see the rate at which that is decreasing, I, I don't know. So we will see, but that's something that will happen one day. So that's all I've got. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye.